The two-century reign of the Spanish branch of the powerful Habsburg family came to an end in the year 1700, when King Charles II died without an heir. But it's the reason he didn't have an heir that's so unusual, out of control in breeding. So how exactly did modern science determine that from an autopsy conducted over 300 years ago? Well, even back at the turn of the 18th century, doctors had a bit of a head start on the mystery of Charles II's death. The Habsburg line, which had a royal legacy stretching all the way back to 13th century Germany and Austria, saw Spain enter the world stage as a colonial empire, and the Habsburgs were famous for their inbreeding. The reason? They believed their own hype and didn't want to degrade the royal bloodline by marrying common folk. This is why royals married other royals, why they would never allow um, any marriage out of a royal family. While he was alive, King Charles II was known for a distinctive protruding lower jaw, a shared trait among many members of the Habsburg family. Family members were known as well for having unusually large noses and oversized lips, all of which became more pronounced over successive Habsburg generations. When Charles II died at the age of 38, physicians conducted an autopsy. Their notes have now helped modern scientists theorize what might have been the root cause of the so-called Habsburg jaw, also known as the Habsburg chin. Additionally, recent research offers insight into why Charles was described as bewitched during his lifetime. Perhaps most importantly, though, King Charles II's autopsy may help finally explain why the last royal Habsburg of Spain was never able to produce an heir. On the surface, the notes from doctors who performed the autopsy on Charles II sound completely made up, describing conditions that were at the very least improbable, if not actually impossible. The notes read that Charles had a very small heart of the size of a grain of pepper, the lungs corroded, the intestines putrefactive and gangrenous, in the kidney three large stones, a single testicle as black as coal, and his head full of water. Some of these aren't as unlikely as they sound. Sadly, Charles II had a difficult childhood, with many physical development delays and other challenges. At birth, his sex could not be firmly established. He breastfed until the age of four and didn't begin walking until he was six, surviving many viral and bacterial infections, among other illnesses. By age 10, Charles spoke only haltingly and could neither read nor write. Those in the Spanish court at the time called Charles bewitched, and because of this, the first decade of King Charles II's reign was a regency under the Queen Mother, as she handled affairs of state. So could all of this be explained by what was found in his autopsy? For centuries, scientists have pondered whether those striking words written at the time of Charles' autopsy were true, and if so, what conditions they might have described. There's also long been speculation about what may have caused the unusual appearance of Habsburg family members as well as the many physical challenges and mental delays Charles experienced throughout his life. That research has now produced some answers. Scientists at the University of Santiago de Compostela in Spain have now revealed genetic proof of what historians had long suspected. Many of Charles II's medical issues were caused by inbreeding. This was a result of the Habsburg pension for marrying within the family to maintain a pure royal bloodline and consolidate power. Further emerging data related to Charles II now also reveals he likely was intersex. Perhaps what caused this in Charles II is what's currently referred to as Klinefelter syndrome, a rare chromosomal condition found in males that affects typical testicle development and can cause infertility, among other medical issues. It's also possible that Charles II had congenital kidney issues that were a result of inbreeding. Additionally, the water described in his brain could have been caused by hydrocephalus, which in turn may have been caused by a number of the childhood infections he is known to have lived through. Symptoms include fluid buildup in the brain, which were noted in his autopsy reports.